Tonight, a march and rally to support Portland's transgender community. More than 100 people started from the Equality Main offices on Congress Street and marched to City Hall. Several people spoke to the crowd, which included a number of transgender students. Organizers say it is important to show their support. Protecting these rights is protecting our access uh, to public spaces. It's protecting our access to participate in society and uh, to lead the, frankly, very normal lives that most trans people have. Organizers say the outpouring of support has been overwhelming. In Washington, D.C., Montana Congressman Ryan Zinke is sworn in as new U.S. Secretary of Interior. Vice President Mike Pence swearing him in. Zinke will oversee the nation's public lands. And speaking of the Trump administration, could it include a position for Governor LePage? Well, LePage was in Washington for the Republican Governors Association meeting and attended a ball at the White House. Speculation has swirled about a possible spot for the LePage since he uh, endorsed then candidate Donald Trump. Meanwhile, USM political science professor Ron Schmidt says the governor may be trying to increase his national visibility. He might want to be in D.C. He might want to be involved in national politics. Another is he might be trying to increase his national visibility uh, because he's thinking about a run for the Senate, uh, perhaps, or because he has long-term national political aspirations. Meanwhile, Governor LePage's communication director says if there are any developments with the Trump administration, that the main media will be the last to know. Senator Angus King says he had a productive meeting with President Donald Trump's Supreme Court nominee today, but he wants to see what Mainers think. King says he is going to continue to evaluate the record of Judge Neil Gorsuch after their face-to-face -face meeting, which King called one of the first steps in my ongoing process to better understand his judicial philosophy and temperament. As we told you at this time last night, a special committee tabled the proposal to rename Portland's Franklin Street to honor Martin Luther King. Many residents citing the history of Franklin Street, which dates back to the 1700s. It was in the 1960s that many residents were forced out and several longtime neighborhoods were destroyed in order to expand the road. Many of those against renaming Franklin believe King himself would not want his name attached to that kind of history. The name Franklin Street is the real last vestige uh, of the heritage of that community. All of that was cleared, and the name Franklin uh, was left with it as an artery. So in the name of efficiency, you lost many hundreds of homes. The special committee has recommended a special task force be formed to find another way to honor Dr. King. Happening now, the Maine Department of Environmental Protection will be holding a pre-hearing tomorrow in regards to a proposed electronic toll plaza in York. Town officials and members of the citizens group Think Again will be attending as, intervent, uh, for, as interveners for the project. Electronic tolling would be put in uh, one and a half miles north of the existing plaza. Members of the community may debate through mid-April while a public hearing is set to take place on May 22nd at an undetermined location. The two accountants involved in that best picture mix-up at the Oscars will never be able to go to the Oscars again. PwC accountants Brian Cullinan and Martha Ruiz were responsible for the winner's envelopes at Sunday's show. And as we all saw, presenters Warren Beatty and Faye Dunaway wound up with the wrong envelope when they announced Best Picture. The president of the Film Academy that runs the Oscars says the two will uh, never return to the awards show. Also in California, a pair of base jumpers are arrested after jumping from a San Francisco building. Two men were arrested for the stunt. Witnesses say three people jumped from the top of the Hilton Tower at about midnight on Wednesday. Officers uh, walked the men to the police station with their parachutes following behind. Police say a third suspect got away. As we continue our special series, State of Addiction, we talk today with Dr. Patrice Harris. 
She is the head of the American Medical Association's task force to reduce opioid abuse. She talked about a number of topics, including how to treat pain without opioids. She says there are alternatives that can be effective without the potential risk of addiction. Pain is a complex phenomenon. There is a bi biological component, a psychological component, even a social component. And so each individual experiences pain differently. Dr. Harris also says it is important for patients to feel comfortable about seeing their doctor if they feel they have developed a substance use disorder. In Falmouth today, the Stitch Out Cancer Program holding a drop-off party to provide those participating in this year's Try For a Cure event with the pink and white scarves in honor of those battling cancer. Organizers say that they are hoping to make more than 1,400 scarves for the event. Everyone who takes part in the Try For a Cure will be honoring someone they who has had the disease. Similar handmade scarves were distributed after the Boston Marathon bombings where volunteers thought, why not do the same thing for Maine? So we're hoping that we can pass that same kind of love and energy and support to all of the women who somehow have been touched by cancer. Let me see. And organizers say they would like to be able to raise $2 million for those battling cancer during this year's Try for a Cure. And still coming up, how a deadly fire in Oregon has claimed the lives of four children. Neighbors describe the tragic incident. In Louisiana, how police, a police chase ends when a truck goes airborne and goes crashing down on the side of the road. The whole incident caught on camera. President Trump condemns recent bomb threats and acts of hate in local communities. Amaik Sadiaz in Washington, why some groups now want the president to go one step further. And it may be March 1st, but we need to put all thoughts of spring fever on hold, at least through the weekend. Look at the drop in temperature Saturday, a very cold day. Total look at the forecast coming up right after this break. This is Channel 8 WMTW, Maine's total weather and news at 11. Live with Steve Minnick and Chief Meteorologist Roger Griswold. Maine's total weather and news at 11 continues. If you weren't stuck in the fog, you managed to clear out and for some it was a beautiful evening. Nice looking pictures coming to us out of Westbrook. Photojournalist John Cole capturing this waxing crescent moon as it set dropping, dropping, dropping. Very nice time lapse. John, thank you for uh, stepping outside and catching that for us. Now elsewhere, it's been foggy, very tough to see much. Truly, it's York County that had that excellent visibility 10 miles plus Sanford, Rochester down to Portsmouth. One mile in Portland, it did improve briefly up to about three miles earlier this evening. Now a quarter mile visibility, Augusta, Waterville, Wiscasset. This is fog right from the coast back through Lewiston, Auburn. We saw pictures at the top of the show uh, looking out over Lewiston. And the fog extends back up into the mountains where visibilities are a quarter mile. Berlin, New Hampshire, a half mile in Whitefield, even over to Lindenville, uh, running at about a half mile. That will all push out of here. The fog will be gone. Temperatures are pretty much going to hold steady through the remainder of the overnight. What we're waiting on is a cold front to come through. And it's still out over western New York State. It is likely to keep us in the fog here through the overnight until that front pushes through. And in doing so, the wind is going to change direction and then the temperatures are going to fall throughout the day. One line of showers associated with the cold front itself and there has been some thunderstorm activity over portions.